Jesus Christ, we believe thou cared for us, O oh God, that you loved us and you love us too well. Even you took time on the cross of Calvary for our sake, O oh God. All our trials, our temptations, you put them on yourself, O oh God. You dearly purchased us, O oh God. And Satan can never claim us, O oh God. Tonight, we know you here. And we are in your presence because we love you, O oh God. We come here because you first loved us, O oh God. Give our sins, our treasures, O oh God. Sometimes we may be weary in time. Sometimes disappointed in the things of his world. But Lord, when we think about the work you did on the cross of Calvary, there we find our strength, O oh God. We humble ourselves in thy presence tonight, O oh God. Because, Lord, you said your word will never return to thee void. Thou said you will send thy word, and thy word shall fulfill the purpose. Lord, in the evening time, you sent the voice of Elijah. He went to call a bride to thyself. And Lord, the station of that voice, O oh God, do we know what we hear from that voice will come to pass. May we become partakers of it, O oh God. I commit this service tonight into your hands, O oh God. May we feel your presence with us tonight, O oh God, as we worship you. We commit our son to you. Remember our precious brother, even Greg, and the daughter Nick, Nicholas, our father, as she has been going through that strong operation, Lord. We know there is balm in Gali. We know, Lord, there is a physician in the land. And Lord, by your stripes, you are made a whole. Lord, we commit that family into your hands, O oh Father. May your mercy and grace be with them, O oh God. As we are gathered here tonight, O oh Father, you said, wherever two or three are gathered in thy name, thou shalt be in thy midst. I invite your presence tonight, O oh God. May you touch every sister, every brother, every little one, every family that is represented here, O oh God. Father, I commit them unto your hands, O oh Father. I just come out of the way as even I stand behind this desk, oh God. Come down, take preeminence, oh Father. Come thy bride across this nation unto your hands, those who are gathered tonight. Lord, may your mercy and your Holy Spirit be with them, oh God. We come in the service once again unto you. May all glory and honor come back to you. For I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I just believe you are fine in the Lord and you are here to worship the Lord, the King of Kings who died for us. Are you happy? It's just another privilege even to stand in the house of the Lord and just worship him, just recognize what work he's done for us. We turn to our Bible self three places to tonight from the book of Romans a familiar we read from the book of Romans the book of Matthew and the book of Genesis just short readings there to have a family fellowship tonight just a little talk then we can pray and go home as we seek the will of God from Romans 12 we read verse 1 and 2 the Bible says I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to the world, 
but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. From the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 12. The Bible says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. And finally, we can turn to the book of Genesis. <coughs> we read from verse chapter 3 and verse 22 to 24. Bible says, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and, and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man blessed at the east of the garden of Eden, a cherubim and flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. May God add blessings to his word and you may be seated. Praise the Lord. I told Brother Busonga is not with us here tonight. He's in Boston. I just meeting with the family. The daughter has been going through an operation and it has quite been detailed. And we believe God will have mercy and take control of the same. And I just remember the family and the sister into the hands of the Lord that God's will may be done. He's the creator of all things. And you always say, let thy will be done. Praise the Lord. Tonight, by God's grace, um, <coughs> I'd like to uh, just share a few things uh, for a short while. This is already 8 o'clock. And just maybe think on a few things and we can pray and go home. Do you love him? I'm not always a very good speaker, but uh, I just hopefully that... Uh, God will give me grace in this moment in time. I know most times when people come to church on Friday, they came from work. They came from places that have been hiding around and they're feeling weary and tired. But we are here to be strengthened. Maybe you've been going through a tough day with your boss and with your children and whatever you are doing. And you come here because, remember, nobody pushed you to come. You came because you love God. They believe because you love God, you didn't come here so that another brother or sister can see you. You came here because you love God. And so you always do sing, there's an eye watching you. And that eye will never lose sight. Praise the Lord. God is so good. And tonight I want to speak on a thought I've been figuring out. So many things going through my mind. And I'd like to speak about protection. And many times... We are out there, we are walking, we are living, we are thinking. And I would like to think about protection and see what we do for ourselves. Uh, I have a question on that. Why and why? Why number one and why number two? Why do we protect and why do we protect? Praise the Lord. Because we are protection. We protect things. We protect ourselves. We protect our children. We protect our homes. And uh, it's a big issue when you think about protection. Praise the Lord. So I'd like to speak about that by God's grace. And as we've read in from the scriptures, we see even God protecting himself and protecting the tree of life and taking care of it lest no man goes there and mess up with it. Praise the Lord. And Paul is beseeching us, he's calling us, he's begging us not to confound ourselves even to the world, but to think on the things of God. Praise the Lord. As you know, how people are walking out, the people are thinking, and uh, people protect themselves, they protect their homes. 
We guard property. You guard buildings. Why? Because we fear. Praise the Lord. We expect if we don't do so, there could be a danger. There could be an attack. And there could be a loss. And that's why we are there. You are there to protect, to make sure things are safe. Praise the Lord. And we would look at it and figure out why. Why do we do that? To protect could mean to shield or to cover. Praise the Lord. You are keeping away. God is good. When we think about scriptures, we think about Christians. We are called to serve. The whole purpose God wants us is really to have fellowship with him. To walk with him. To be of service to God and God alone. That's why the scripture says God is a jealous God. And that's why he said you shall love me. And you shall have no any other gods besides me. God cares for himself. We have to protect ourselves. And we have to protect self. Myself. I protect myself and we protect ourselves. It's two in it. And it's a compound mean. Praise the Lord. And we see God in the beginning. He walks with man freely. He has fellowship with man freely. Man has the liberty to do whatever he chose to do. Man is walking in the garden of Eden by themselves, free of whatever they wanted to do. And the Bible says in the evening time, God came down and walked with man and had good times. Until disobedience and unbelief came in. Praise the Lord. The prophet has taught us what sin is, is unbelief. I'll try to squeeze that by God's grace so that you can get what does this really mean. I always say a good doctor, he may give you the, 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 the quinine. It's sometimes very harsh and very bad in the mouth. But if the doctor knows this is going to be very nice for you, he'll push you, push it into your mouth. Sometimes you feel like throwing out, but the doctor will still push it. Because he knows medicine. Praise the Lord. And many times when we are taking medicine, we bear the pain. Because we focus on the healing. Some of the medicine you take doesn't taste so good at all at all. Some of you have little kids who give them medicine and you see they're just throwing them out. They don't want to take but you are holding that child. If you can get support, you get support to make sure that she drinks it. Praise the Lord. Why? And if someone stopped you from doing that, you'll be very upset because you are looking at the health of that child. And you have a revelation that if he drinks this, and because you have faith that the doctor said this is the medicine for the prescription I gave you, he must take it three times. You're going to push it in. Praise the Lord. Protect. I'm standing behind the pulpit, and the pulpit is always the most attacked place. Now, we are, our protection begins where I'm standing. And all of us, the pulpit most times is under attack. So don't become part of that attack. And here comes life, and here comes death. Praise the Lord. So I'm starting this thought protection by thinking about me and you. And I said, why do we protect? And I said, it has two ways. And I want to tell you, God in the beginning brought the doctrine of protection by sending cherubims around the tree of life. Because he knew man has messed up. Now man will not step there again, but by my will. Praise the Lord. So it's protected. The tree of life is protected. And in that tree, there is life. In that tree, there was knowledge. In that tree, there was healing. There was power. But it's protected. Who did so? God. Praise the Lord. So I just want you to pay attention. Just go with me. 
and just think, who are we? Why, why are we here? And Paul is beseeching us through the scripture we read from the book of Romans to present our bodies, hallelujah, as a living sacrifice. Not a dead sacrifice, but a living sacrifice, hallelujah. Holy and acceptable before God. God, have mercy. He's beseeching us. He's beseeching you and me. That scripture, and I read it, is so wealthy. It's so strong. Praise God. To present. Present means to give. Provide. Give your body. Hallelujah. As a sacrifice. Not dirty, but holy. And acceptable unto God. And he says, this is our reasonable service. It's not unreasonable. It looks, it is a reasonable service. Your service. To who? To God. You are presenting. Friends, you have a work to do. You have a job to do. You have something to do. Praise God. And he goes to say, do not be conformed. Conforming means acting like, praise the Lord. Acting in accordance. Praise the Lord. Do not be conformed to the world. The things of the world are present to the eyes. The things of the flesh are present to the world. And when I talk about protection, I'm meaning in three sections. We're going to look at three parts. He says, present your body as a sacrifice holy in the eyes of God. Holy, acceptable. You can present a sacrifice that's not acceptable. You can present something with a platter to God, but it's not acceptable. But God wants a presentation before him that is acceptable in his presence. Amen. Praise the Lord. And what does that do? You're not confronting yourself to the world, but unto God the Father. Hallelujah. That ye be transformed. Hallelujah. Transformed means change. Very healthy scripture. Be transformed. Be translated. Be transformed. You change your appearance. When you are presenting God, you are going yourself, not confronting yourself to the world, but getting transformed. You are changing your appearance from your flesh into the heavenly kingdom. That's why he says we are holy priesthood. We are old balls. We are walking in this world, but we are not like the world. We are in the world, but we are not part of the world because we are walking in the presence of God as men and women who are getting transformed. Hallelujah. We are being changed. Hallelujah. Our structure is being changed. When you are transforming something, you are changing the structure. We are becoming God material. We are coming from the birth of my father and my mommy. We are getting to the birth, the new birth of Christ. We are changing our appearance. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. And he continued to say, and by the renewing of your mind. New birth. Hallelujah. Read that scripture. It's so healthy. Your mind has to be renewed. Many of us, we are not receiving what we ask for because our minds have not been renewed. We have not been conformed. We have not been changed. We have not been transformed. You have to transform that mind. It has to receive a new birth. When your mind is renewed, you think different. You reason think 
you, you see things different because it's a renewed mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does that do? That ye may prove. That ye may prove. What is good? Prove evidence. Hallelujah. It's just one script I'm still following. That you may prove that which is good. It can be good, but it's not acceptable. Paul says that which is good and acceptable. Hallelujah. Not just acceptable, but perfect. Hallelujah. Will of God. Praise the Lord. Perfect will of God. We can actually cross and go home. And just think. My brother, my sister, you have a job to do. Open the scripture and read the scripture again. After I've just spoken about it, you open and read. Praise the Lord. You have to be transformed. You have to provide a reasonable service. Reasonable. Sometimes, when you are giving an excuse, we say, give me a reasonable excuse why you are late. So reasonable means factual. Praise the Lord. You are late, yes. But can I get a reasonable explanation why you are late? So when you give that reasonable explanation, it justifies your point. So God wants a reasonable service. Not being babysitted in church. That you didn't have a right, but you still made it. In other words, if you didn't have a right, you not make it. So you are in church, you are babysitted to come to church. God requires sacrifice. Praise the Lord. He requires sacrifice. He requires new birth. A service that is good is acceptable in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. Do you love him? The kingdom of God since the times of John suffereth violence. And the violence Praise the Lord. Those are the scriptures we read. Friends, this is the way of the cross. If it's easy way, then God can save the whole world. But God died. He cried on the cross of Calvary. He carried your burdens and my burdens. He paid a price for it. He took time on the cross. This is the way of the cross. The kingdom of God suffered violence and people of violence take it by force. The violent take it by force. Hallelujah. What is the kingdom? Jesus said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Where is that kingdom? You must know your position in Christ. And once you know your position in Christ, that becomes your domain. That becomes your part. And once you know your part, you must fight for it. You must protect. I'm talking about the physical now. Then we'll go to the, to the spiritual. If you know that's your child, 
You are going to do all you can. We've had mothers who jumped into fire to pull down and get their kids out. Because they know that's my child. What was that? That's protection. Praise God. And Jesus Christ was hung on the cross of Calvary. He came down. the souls that were in prison took all the devil was holding into his hands. I'll leave it at that. But the devil is fighting you. As you are sitting here, the devil is fighting you. And I want to start from the scriptures from the pulpit here. And the devil knows how to get you. First of all, the devil will destroy your thinking about the pulpit. The devil will make you lose confidence on the pulpit. Because the devil knows. Once you lose confidence, he got you. And that's why the voice of Elijah tells you, if you have no confidence in the church you go to, choose another church. Praise the Lord. It's going to be a bit hard, but it's so easy. Only believe. All things are possible. If you have no confidence, if you have no confidence in the pastor of this church, choose another church. Choose another pastor and go to that pastor. Because God protects his own gifts. God protects his word. God follows his word. Praise the Lord. God will never go against his word. <laughs> Blessed be the name of all Jesus Christ. Protection. Why do we protect? We protect because we fear. Protection is a product of fear. And fear is a product of death. Praise the Lord. Let me ask you today. When you left your homes, you locked your doors. Why? Outside here, if I go, there's no car that is open. Why? Why are you scared of? And you have to go and check again before you go to bed. Even those who live in apartments that are secured from the entrance, you still lock your door. Why? Why? Pack your car, you look around. You check your boot, your trunk. You want to make sure it's secured. What is that? You're protecting it, right? You're trying to make protection. The house. You check the doors and you make sure that hey, you can't sleep. And if something happens, the first thing you are figuring out is the door secured. Why? We are two old friends. And every member of this church, you must arm yourself to protect your church. You must protect the pulpit. You must protect the word of God. We are not here to support men. We are here to support the word of God. Praise God. We are supporting the word. We are dying for the word. Praise God. Protection. Why do we protect? Last time I preached, I asked you, when Obama is coming, you see all the motorcycles, you see the best of the best. He has a vehicle called the Beast. It's an armored car. It can roll and roll and roll, and the guy will be sitting there. And before it rolls, maybe 10, 20 cars will have rolled. When he was going to London, they shipped it before he got there. But you can see how limited money is. They got into the streets of London. It was stuck. They figured out why. It was a shame and an embarrassment in the United States. Protection. And I asked you a question. Does it mean there's no other man? Do we think there are no other men who have been born in this country that can become presidents? Why do we protect that one figure? Why? There's 
are common things. The word of God, God himself protected the tree of life. You know, friends, we want to succeed. We want to get what we want. We want to be very happy. But the things that are going to make us happy, they make us sad. Amen. So become sad, then become happy. Shake off, but do it. Don't shake off and walk away. When you are giving your son the medicine, you are giving the medicine, you are forcing it, and he takes and tomorrow he gets healed. But we care more about that than we care about the word of God. Amen. Swallow it. It's a pill that will help you. Try a little bit, cry, cry. But when you cry, tomorrow you wake up, you are feeling good. If you had a stomachache, drink it. When you wake up, you are feeling good. It was bitter, it was bad. Let me tell you, friends, Brother Branham says, the trainer for the boxers, the boxers never love their trainers. They never. It's painful when you are kick, kick, tack, 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 tack. It's painful to the body. But when you get the belt and you are declared the conqueror, it's so wonderful. Amen. Don't you walk feeling good? Amen. My sisters, none of us here love failure. Prove to me one man here, one woman who loves failure. You all need to succeed. There's a medicine for success. Praise the Lord. I said we're having a talk here. And I'm a very happy man. I'm not annoyed. Maybe I'm tired. But I want to tell you one thing, friends. We have a medicine for success. We have a prescription for success. Praise the Lord. We have that prescription for success. Medicine for success. We have it with us. Praise the Lord. Man failed by disobedience. God gave the freedom. Man misused the freedom. But you see, God comes down to do what? To redeem this man and at the same time to protect himself. Praise the Lord. God can destroy the whole city of Elizabeth to protect himself. Because God will never fail. For God's word is true. Stay on the side of God. Stand on the side of God. Don't stand on the side of the church. Don't stand on the side of men. Don't stand on the side of women. Stand on the side of man. Take sides with Jesus. Praise the Lord. Protection. Stay with the word. I'm not ashamed to be called a Christian. I'm not ashamed to be called a Branhamite. I know that word is not common these days, Branhamites. I'm not ashamed to be called by the name of that man. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. We are not worshippers of men. We are worshippers of God. We follow men who follow God. And the Levites took the ark. And as they took the ark and they carried it. And the children of Israel were keeping a distance. And they were following from a distance. They didn't touch it. Touching it was death. But they followed to make sure the Levites led them right. Hallelujah. Protection. We must protect ourselves. And Paul, remember, Paul is beseeching you. Beseeching means I'm begging you. I'm requesting you. I'm crying before you. I'm beseeching you. Present yourselves before God. Holy. Which is a good service. Acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. He came back to redeem. Hallelujah. I beseech you. I'm imploring you. I'm 
begging you, please. He's soliciting us. Give an acceptable service. Most of us, we are providing service that's not acceptable. And by God's grace, pray for me. I want to show you something here. That when you go before God, if the service is acceptable, if the service is the will of God, if the service is perfect before God, God is obligated to answer his word. Because God is God. He is obligated. But you see, I showed you again, Paul says, you must renew your mind. So we are going before God, but our minds have not been renewed. Still dirty. The cobwebs. You have to clear them. You must be born again. Then we need before God. Because God looks. God looks. And God is fair. God is not a respecter of men. God is not a respecter of women. God is not a respecter of churches. God is not a respecter of pastors. God is not a respecter of deacons. God respects his own word. So long as you go on the pose of the word of God, God is obligated. Praise God. And then we present it. We present it. Hallelujah. We present it. You must present it. Praise the Lord. We must present it. Do you love him? Do you love him? I just want you to think a little bit. That's a small part of the scripture. Small part. My brothers and my sisters, God loves us. You see, man, after he failed, the Bible says from the book of Genesis, and the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they, 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 they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons to cover themselves. God, 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 God is God. God is God. He says, verse 21, And to Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord make coats of skins and clothes of them. Let God give you the dress, friends. Don't dress up yourself. You see, they made aprons for themselves. But that's God giving them a dressing. Receive a dressing from God. And you'll be in safe hands. Many times we comfort ourselves by our own nappings. That's why when you commit and you go into your bedroom and you cry a little bit and you comfort yourself with those kind of aprons and come to the church of the living God thinking you made it right. You've not made it right. You need a dressing from God. They thought they were, they were okay. They were still naked in the eyes of God. Let God dress you. Then you have a covering. You make yourself comfortable. You make yourself feel good. You cry a little bit. Then you think you are fine. That's why you pray, but you don't receive. That's why you are sick and you can't get healed. That's because there's something behind. You must present yourself with a sacrifice that is accepted for God. That's what Paul is beseeching you. I don't care how many sermons I've preached. I don't care how many churches I've gone to. Unless I live right before God, God will never hear me. Because God is God. God does not care about preachers. God does not care about the church. God does not care about the pastors. God cares about himself. God is a possessive God. God is a jealous God. God cares about his own word, friends. You must renew your minds. He's beseeching you now. Because we are living in deception. Why are we poor? Is there no palm in Galid? Is there no physician in the land? Why are the daughters of God sick? The prophet asks. Why? This 
This is hard stuff. This is serious business. This is bedroom time. This is seed time. Serious business. There are jokes. We are going home, friends. Time is fast spent. Nations are breaking. Israel is back. Calamities are filling the world. I'm going back home, friends. This is time to go home, friends. It's not time to play church. It's not behind scene games. This honest things of the flesh. Protection. Don't protect yourself with those napkins. Want you to protect yourself with a dress from God. It's becoming hard, right? <laughs> you see, you see, Paul was a prophet. And as we always say, Paul was not with Jesus. But he wrote things. He saw. Paul saw the son of perdition. He saw the end. He saw many things. Just like so many things. And he asked, when shall it this be? He said, done. You know what? Seal the book until the time of the end. When these things shall be revealed. Because time has not come. The prophet was asked if you are to live, which age would you choose to live? The days of Jesus, he said no. Let me tell you, friends, there are many things that are coming to open in your eyes. If only you can renew the eyes. If only you can renew your mind. If only I can renew my mind. There are many things that are happening in our presence. That Adam, Abraham, Daniel, Isaiah, they desire to see this day. When God himself can come in man and man becomes God. This is the day. God himself is coming into man. One day this church, things will happen and will be gone. Don't wait for that time. Prepare yourself now. Things will happen. Maybe you'll have been home and you'll be getting the stories. It happened. It'll be done. Prepare yourself. Get prepared. Praise the Lord. Why do we protect? The answer to it is very good. Because none of us, as I said, none of us, thank you, my brother. Praise the Lord. Maybe my brother heard my voice was not good. It has been not good so far. Thank you. None of us would like to live careless. And let me tell you, friends, the things we do, the things we find ourselves doing, not really we love to do them. But I said it's a war. It's a war. When you find yourself so upset, Sometimes you find yourself so anchored. You don't like to be anchored. But it's a war. And you are getting overtaken because you've not renewed your mind. Praise the Lord. You see, Brother Branham was a man who is the first fruit, the man who was way before us with the voice of Elijah. Now, if yourself, in this congregation today, you know there's a sister who's plotting evil against you. And you come and you stand here. And God showed you that sister will be sitting in a corner like this. He'll be putting on a scarf like this. He'll be looking like this. And this is what he's thinking about you. And that sister come and stand, you sit and say, Amen. How would you feel about it? It takes a total mind of God to love. When you hear a sister spoke so bad of you, how do you feel about it? You even don't want to see that sister. Because your mind has not been renewed. If your mind has been renewed, 
if you are born again, you love the sister. But because our minds are still the old mind, and that's why the Bible says, let the mind that was in Christ be in you. I'm talking about the flesh now. Because the first protest you must go for is the flesh. Because this flesh, this is my enemy number one. It's not you, my brother. It's not you, my sister. My body, my flesh is my enemy. Why? I think I worry so much what the world will say about me. That's why we have mirrors. And the devil knows he gave you a mirror to look at yourself. But God gave you a mirror called the word of God to look at it. But we are so concerned going into this mirror. Turning around. Turning, shaking my head. How do I look like? Can you ask yourself, how do I look like spiritually this morning? Why? You are protecting self. You are concerned about self. I had one man, a presidential candidate, he asked, who do you consult? He said, I consult myself. I am my own counsel. It's a man being overtaken by the pride of life. But it's a dying material. We are so concerned about self. We think about self. We figure out about self. Why did he say that about me? It's about me. It's about me. As me. I'm an African man. I'm an American man. I'm an American woman. We Americans. Me, an American. Me, an African. Me, I, self. The body. Young boys, you are going to those gym trying to look at your muscles. How is your muscle in Christ? How many times do you commit yourself to God? You should be checking your muscle before Christ that I can kick the devil because I have the scripture. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. We can wake up very early in the morning, go on the road and run and run because we are trying to make ourselves look good. But how do you look spiritually? How do you present yourself spiritually? Paul is beseeching you. Present yourself as a sacrifice, an acceptable service in the presence of God. Protect that. Praise the Lord. Friends, healing is not in the church. Healing is not in the prayer line. Healing is in you. Praise the Lord. That's why the question comes. Do you believe? Do you believe? Healing is in me. Victory is in me. Success is in me. But you must line up with the word of God. Hallelujah. Do you love him? Paul says, I employ you. I beg you. Hallelujah. I'm beseeching you. I feel like just hang on that scripture. Because there is so much on that scripture. That if you can just take that scripture and just read it and read it as you ask yourself a question. Because if you do that, your prayer line is direct. When you give God a small margin, he multiplies it. Praise the Lord. I want to teach you and to make you know it's good to ask God for big things. Praise the Lord. We ask God for small things. When they went to there and they told them throw the net, they didn't throw the net onto shallow wall. Oh, brother, what are you saying? Throw the net in deep sea where there's much fish and pull it out. When you give a dollar, God will just give you a dollar because you can give a dollar. When you give 10, God knows you want to give 10, he'll give you 10. When you give 20, God knows you just can get 20. 
So God, you limit yourself to one dollar? Does your mind. Renew it tonight. And ask for big things. Praise the Lord. Don't just pray for headache. Pray for cancer too. You don't pray for cancer because you have no faith. Begin to pray for big things. I was telling Pastor Ken one time, when one guy will come and maybe lame, walking like this, disabled, and we pray and he's healed. Someone will come and tell us, you know, you guys, I'm going to give you a church. The world wants to see Christ. And Brother Branham said, if you bring Christ on the scene, we don't follow miracles, but miracles follow us. If we bring Christ on the scene, Christ will bring the attraction. But Christ is an expensive boy. Christ is not a cheap boy. Christ does not go to these cheap girls. Christ is looking for a serious girl to marry. Christ is not going for a loose girl who is being pampered by every boy on the streets. Christ is looking for a serious woman for marriage. And once she gets that woman, they get into a relationship. What happens? The one produces the fruit, which is Christ. And you cannot hide that fruit. It's sin. These are realities. Ask for big things. Throw your net into deeper waters. But we throw the nets, but our minds are not renewed. We throw the nets outside the will of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Protection. I like this chorus you normally sing here. Every quote, every verse, every scripture. We sing, right? Is it true? <laughs> every promise, every verse. Ta -la -ta. Ta -ta 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 ta 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 Really? Praise the Lord. Present. Present. Don't just sing. Present. I'm presenting this scripture is mine. Even Brother Branham came and said this day, this scripture is fulfilled. He, just like Jesus, Jesus identified himself and said, This day, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has, and he said, This scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. Elijah of our age, he came into the tabernacle and he came and picked the scroll. Again, he said, This scripture, this day, is fulfilled. And one day, you are the bride of Christ. You are becoming one with Christ. And there must be this day in my life. This day! Protection. Tonight, we must look for weapons. Tonight, we must arm ourselves. We have a radio station. We call it in Jesus' name. Just go listen to that station. Only believe. Listen to that broadcast. The word of God. The voice of God. Listen to that station. It will tell you how to arm yourself very well. And when the devil is coming, you know that's the devil. When the devil is talking, you know the devil talking. When God is talking, you know that, that, is, that is God talking. When Jesus was with the disciples, they were all his followers. Peter was the best. But there was a time Peter was talking and there was a time the devil was talking. There's the time your husband is talking and there's the time the devil is talking. There's the time your wife is talking and there's the time the devil is talking. So I must know at this moment in time, that's not my wife. That's the devil talking. This time, that's not my husband. That's the devil. Now, since it's devil, let me look for my mission. I must arm myself now. Because at this moment in time, it's war time. 
I must protect myself. Because for sure, that's not my wife. That's not my husband. Those are not my children. This is the devil talking now. I must protect myself. Renewing our minds. Because God talks. And many times God has talked and we thought it was the devil. Because we do not know the voice of God. Don't worry. I'm just feeling like just rolling on that scripture. I had a lot of quotes here. But just feel like going round and round, round and round. My brothers and sisters, we need to protect ourselves. We need to protect ourselves. The spiritual attack in the land. In all corners, all the things you hold peaceful, the attacks. And the first attack begins from the pulpit. Once you lose confidence on the pulpit, your life is destroyed. And that's why I said, if you're not comfortable in this church, choose another church. And before you choose another church, go and make it right. Don't run away. Because some of us, we are having some, we, are, we discover we are naked. Now, instead of seeking God, we go walk into the bush. And Brother Branham said, leaves are religion. We hide in religion. And right now, we have a religion called quotes. So you take, because you have one quote from the prophet, then you use that quote. That's not acceptable will of God. He can never accept your sacrifice. If you leave the country and go to Puerto Rico and go to a church and meet the biggest preacher in Puerto Rico and because you came to America and he gives you all the respect, that respect does not destroy the sin you have. The sin stays. My sister, if you live wrong and you are wedded, and the best of the best of the preachers, maybe you went and stood on Branham Tabernacle, and you are wedded by the best of the best of the world. If you lived in fornication, that sin still stays. It's not an acceptable sacrifice. House cleaning. You must clean night. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters. We need to be honest with one another. We need to love God. We need to serve God. And we need to present ourselves before God. Because God speaks. Medicine is protection. Why do we take medicine? To protect ourselves. Police is protection. The army is protection. These homes and buildings we have is protection. What are you protecting? Your life. Your physical life. All those things I'm talking about is circled on protection. For what? We fear death. We'll be looking at that more deep. Praise God. Praise God. To me, I love to come to church and think about myself. I just want to think about myself. Am I right before God? What can man give you, my brother? What? What? What can money give you, my sister? What? It's more frustrating. How many Americans we are seeing their names on the streets, but there are no more? What are you protecting? 
What are you protecting? I'm asking you that question tonight. I just want you to think. What are you dying for? What are you living for? What are you sacrificing for tonight? Yes, you are married. That marriage will come to an end. Yes, you have a job. That job will come to an end. Yes, you have a beautiful skin. It will rot. So what are you protecting? Do you know how much money people are spending on drugs, medicine? Look at the chemists. Check how many around you. What are they for? It's protecting health. So what are we protecting? And if the governments of this world, if the men and women of this world can spend that much to protect a dying body, what do you need to do to protect your spiritual life? You know, sometimes we get so puffed up. Sometimes we become so proud. And I've seen people talk like they own the world. Like you'll never die. You young girls, you are dying material. You need to serve Christ. Amen. I've seen people walk and talk like they own the world. You are dying material. Amen. You rather begin to humble yourself and serve Jesus. I've seen men, I've seen brothers, I've seen preachers talk down at people. You'll die. You need Christ. My sister, my brother, come in the morning and lean in a bit and just say, God, I thank you for your life. You know, I'm guilty of this. This church, we are very lazy. We need Christ. I'm guilty. How will he work? Unless we sacrifice. How will he come? Unless we call upon him. How will he serve us? Unless we give ourselves. Hallelujah. God. Is the reigning king. Oh praise the Lord. Let us not conform ourselves to the world. Praise the Lord. I'm looking for a church. When a brother here, another man talk about me, he'll feel that man is talking about him. Praise the Lord. You young sisters, I'm not looking at a position when you see me on the streets, you dodge the car. You should run because you know that's a man of God. That's a woman of God. You should impress me with joy, not obs. You should be able to shake my hand and say that's a woman of God. You should be happy. You are privileged. To meet a man of God. You are privileged to meet a servant. You are privileged to meet a woman of God. Not to dodge. Praise the Lord. My brothers. We are comfortable in church. Because we are, not, we are feeling we are not naked. Because we give ourselves covering. But God is looking for you. To take that covering away. And give you the right covering. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is looking at you. To renew your mind. Amen. You know you are covering that. Because in your mind you are thinking. You are protecting yourself. Because you think the pastor. So long as I know this I'm fine. So long as the deacon. So long as that and the other brother. That sister they know this I'm fine. I'm good. I'm not naked. But you are off the will of God. Right. Praise the Lord. I would rather, I would rather everyone in this church can scandalize my name but be right with God 
than everyone in this church to call me holy, but I'm dirty in the house of God. Amen. Praise God. I would rather the preacher come and hush and hush and put me down on the pulpit, but before God, I'm right. Amen. Than when he's here and I hate him, but I know I'm wrong. Amen. You stand condemned in the presence of God. Bible says, virgins is mine. So why are you worried? Serve the living God. Just serve the living God and love God. So which sacrifice are we giving tonight? Praise the Lord. Like Brother Peter said, it's just a test. So, what sacrifice are you giving tonight? What makes you happy? Because you have a good job? Because your family is successful? Because God gave you good children? They all have jobs? Because you come from a good family? Because your father was prince or king? That's what makes you happy? Or because you was Brother Branham's tabernacle and you met Brother Joseph and Brother Paul and they spoke to you? Or is it because you read 10 messages or 15, 20 messages you can quote them? What makes you happy? Your protection is the blood of Jesus. When it becomes alive in your life, Praise the Lord. You know, God would lose, he will use things that you love most. And the devil will also use those things. But God says, I'll give you your heart's desire. Do you believe that, God? Today, I'm not preaching. I've just been talking. And I'm hoping talking like the way I'm talking we are conversing. Because to me, I want to talk, and you talk back to me in your thoughts. The Lord Jesus, this is what I want. We are not Pentecostals. We are not here to roll and roll and roll and speak and speak in tongues and out there we begin to fight. We are not here to roll, roll, and when we get into our cars, we are talking about the pastor, we are talking about the other preacher, we are talking about the other person, we are talking about the other preacher. That's not our business. Our business is to explore and bring God. And when you see a brother who is weak in church, we are going after that brother. We are going after that sister. Praise the Lord. I want to give you a secret. Don't judge by what you see. I think it's a radical could be the most holy tomorrow. Read the message adaption, I think it is. Abraham says, who knew Paul as Saul on his way to Damascus will be changed and write the New Testament. And he says, the zealousness of the gospel, of the scroll, of the, sc of the law, he was number one. He fought for the cause. So, it's a good thing to pray for people. It's a good thing to, to, to love one another. It's a good thing for us to protect one another. And tonight, I'm speaking to you, my friends. Protect your bodies. God willing, on Sunday, we look at the spirit and the soul. I just didn't go into this. Because those three must be protected. In those three, the devil will catch you. You must protect your body. Because the devil is using your body to destroy you. The devil will use hunger. It will use the eyes. It will use the feelings. To destroy you. Protect your body.
That's a sacrifice. This body. This body has feelings. This body gets tired. This body gets sick. And when you are sick, you wonder, God, why are you not healing me? You begin to curse God. God is still God. Keep believing. Renew your mind. Keep trusting. Keep believing. Keep following. Protect your body. Let the body not control you. Control your body. Sometimes when the body begins to blow and blow and blow and you have some funny feelings, take it to the blood of Jesus. Protect your body. Think about yourself. Most of the things you think about, the body. And you must arm yourself for your physical body. Because demons will use your body to destroy you. That's why, sisters, you have to dress right. You have to think right. You have to speak right. Because the words are seeds. You speak certain words, they destroy you. And when you speak those words, they come and affect your system. And sometimes you say words, then you realize you can't speak back. And because you are too proud, because of your terrors, you can't repent. Destruction. Praise the Lord. So protect yourself. Speak few words. Because you'll help yourself responsible for the words you say. Sometimes you've seen people get excited and they begin to talk and they begin to talk and they talk and talk and talk. And then you have 20 things to repent about. And because you are so proud, you don't want to repent. So you look, you look for a quote to cut it. But the prophet also said, but the prophet also said, the prophet said just repent. But because you do not want, I always say it, and I told Brother Ken, if I say something wrong on the pulpit, let me just know. I'll come and stand here and repent. I'm a human being. I'm just like one of you. I'm not special. I'm subjected to the word of God. Pastor Ken is subjected to the word of God. Praise the Lord. And that's why you have to study the message. As the pastor is studying, you must study the message. And don't come to ask the pastor a question to stumble on him and put him down because you know the answer and you are just testing to see what he says or you want something else. So you want him to tell you this and then you say, you see what he said? If you have a genuine question, you go to a man of God and you pray about it, God will give you an answer. You must protect the offices of God. You protect the flag of the United States. Donald Trump went into one of the meetings and he told the people, raise up your hand and pledge. You're going to vote for me. And uh, it was a big issue. We all a pledge to the flag and the constitution of the United States. Why do you pledge for this man? Now you can see how Americans are very sensitive to where the allegiance goes to. But are we, as Christians, are we? There was condemnation. How can he say that? That was us. Maybe in your understanding, you just figure out. He said, pledge. You are going to vote for me. Maybe he just didn't, but someone took it so personal. I said, how can he say that? And you, a guy is telling you, oh, that brother is just fake. And you just laugh it off. You laugh it off. That's a serious allegation. If someone says, Brother Patrick is fake, and you are a believer and you heard it, you need to follow it up. Because you laugh. If I'm fake, I should fix it. I should fix it. Maybe he's right. Love one for another. Then you come to church. You are free. You are born again in your mind. You know, majority of us, we are not born again in our minds. That's when you think, you think from the African experience, 
You think from the American experience. You think from the Spanish experience, Haitian experience. So our minds are different. Now, if you begin to preach here from those experiences, we are all done. Our experience is the word of God. Amen. We think the word. We sleep the word. We wake up the word. Do you love him? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you love him? Hallelujah. I'm going to stop there. If I read this, I don't want to keep you long here. No, we are going to church. Sorry to, to work some of you. And it's good to, to do the right thing. Brother Daniel, God bless you. Come up here. Just read me Romans 1 up to verse 2, loud and clear. <coughs> Just read slowly. I want you to listen as my brother reads out. Beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 And be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Can we all say amen? amen. Can we all say amen? amen? I'm begging you. I'm begging you. That's the word of God. If we do that, if we can just keep that part of the Bible, just that part of the Bible, all things are possible. Amen. Shall we stand up? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Maybe I might have been boring tonight, but all is well. Just think about those things. As you go, as you think, as you pray, I want you to pledge allegiance before you pray. Just come and pray for me, the music brothers. I want us to sing that song, I pledge allegiance, the song I love. Will you pledge allegiance to the king, to the lamb, to love him? Would you promise you pray at least for three, four brothers in this church tonight? At least you'll mention three, four, five names and make sure that every other prayer you are mentioning all as many as you can think and you know. God, give me grace to love my brother. And much more so those you think maybe they're weak. Those who think they're not living, probably just the standard of the gospel. Would you go before God and say, God, I'm sacrificing myself for that sister. I'm sacrificing myself for that brother. Oh, God, I feel something in my heart. My brother, my sister is weak. I'm giving myself tonight for my sister. When you come on Sunday, don't tell that brother you prayed for them. But just look at them. And see how you feel. Just do that. Just I go tonight to pray home. Just that brother, that sister, that is a stumbling to your flesh, is a stumbling to your thinking, to your mind. When you think about him, you feel discouraged. Tonight, I'm telling you, 
I'm beseeching you, go tonight and just commit that sister, that brother before God and say, oh Lord, I'm taking this time for my sister. I'm taking this time for my brother. I'm taking this time for my pastor. I'm taking this time for my deacon. Oh God, give me grace to pray for my brother. And as you come on Sunday before God and just look at him and figure out how you feel about it. Gonna think about it. God is God. God is the Holy Spirit. shall die. He's Jehovah Nisi. He's Jehovah Alpha for friends. He's Jehovah, the creator of all things. He can create peace. Of heart, how Christians long. Oh, a brought before. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, does our prayer, oh God. That's our wish before you, Lord. Lord.